in five, 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 four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 oh, ho, ha, Yo, what's going what's up? on? To the east, my brother, to the east, east. my brother, to the <laughs> east, what's going what's on? What's going Welcome on, yo? The thing that we call the Cypher Back. McKinnon and Muff. Back at you, back, back at, at you. you. Took a little hiatus, had some hiatus. stuff we had to take care of, but you know gotta how work. it is. Got to do, got to gotta do. work, got to take care of stuff. Don't had to talk. go to school, had to take pay exams, this, that, and the other thing. Pay the bills, all that good all stuff. That. But we are back. back. We are the Cipher. We are the Cipher crew. We That's are right. back in here and talking to y'all about hip hop and other things that go around the world of hip hop. And how are you doing today, sir? Well, a couple things. Number one, you see, I look a little different today. You look a little, look, look a little different. I wasn't going to say nothing, listen, but go ahead. Listen, for all my Caucasian brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. I am a witness as to we do tan. <laughs> we just call it getting black. Yes. But go back to the old Cypher Crew shows and go to the day show, go to the day show mm -hmm. and you will think I'm a different guy. Yes. Because I've been in the sun. Mm -hmm. My goodness, it's all good, you know, but we do, we just get mad dark. Mm -hmm. um, enough of that. You know, that. in fact, I, took, I noticed today, you know, I was getting, you know, cops was following me more. <laughs> you know, you know I was, you just, just don't apply for no credit. I, right? you know, I, you know I, I, the banks are closed today, but thank goodness, because I was looking for, looking for a loan, but I think I had to wait till I get in the shade a little bit. Yeah, man, you got, you, you, you got to drop a, drop, drop a couple yeah, shades. Yeah, a couple shades, man. But because I think they actually have like a little thing at the bank where they put it up, <laughs> hold it up to your skin. So, excuse me, sir. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. We can't check got, my man. Yeah, hold a second. Let me call security. <laughs> Oh, but you know, on the real. Uh, yesterday, yes, I mentioned this some time ago. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned the Tribe Called Quest documentary. Tribe Called Quest documentary. Yep. Okay. And I was, uh, I had some preconceived notions about this documentary going in. Okay. And uh, if you check some of our older shows or even some of my Facebook postings regarding regarding the documentary, mm -hmm. well, let me give you some background in case you guys don't know. I don't want to get too all over the place. I don't want to spend too much time on this because we're here for a specific reason today. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to be reviewing uh, Sky Zoo's new album, The Great Debater. The Great Debater! But uh, before we get into that, yes, uh, the reason why I'm so patched, I think the tribe, a tribe called Quest is kind of the... Uh, they're, they're pioneers in hip-hop in their own right in terms of they spearheaded what I think is a new genre of hip-hop, the jazzy hip-hop, with a lot of backpackers. If you trace back to what it is you like, it'll probably go back to, to a tribe called Quest. No doubt. At any rate, we took... We, um, Michael Rappaport, mm -hmm. a lot of you guys, you know, um, you know the guy, the white guy, and he does have the ghetto pass. Mm -hmm. Depending who you talk to, apparently Tribe has revoked it. Really? Because he, what happened was, to, to make a long story short, as short as possible, he sent, during the filming of the documentary after it was finished, he sent an email uh, some somewhere along the lines of saying that we're going to make sure that Tribe, we're going to screw Tribe on the credits or something about this, and Tribe mistakenly got the email, and there's some been some controversy back and forth about this. Okay. But that's not what I'm going into because I went into it thinking it's going to be a screwed up. It's going to be all just about how Fife and Q-Tip from Tribe just went at it. And they did go at it big time in the documentary. There's some issues. Some, but they went over a lot of other stuff too. And, and, and I thought that the, um, the documentary was very good. I thought it was very well done. Me, as much as I love Tribe, which is my favorite group, I found out some things about the native tongues and tribe that I didn't really know before. Really? And, I, and it was so good to the fact that I think we're actually going to do a show on it uh, very soon, whether it's next week or the week after. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to actually go over it. So I was blessed enough to uh, look at this documentary. It, it was very it was entertaining, and it just confirmed for me how nice tribe was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they were pioneers in their own right. Um, just the science behind their first three classic albums, People's Instinctive Travels, The Low End Theory, uh, Midnight Marauders, and I'll just say one quote about it. Questlove was on a documentary saying that uh, uh, the day that Midnight Marauders came out, he said that's the last great date in hip hop history. And I forgot what the actual date was. Hmm. But it was in 1993. So, and I forget what date it was in '93. But he says the last great date because two albums came out that day. One was Midnight Marauders, and the other one was uh, Inner 36 Chambers by. Wu Tang. Really? Yeah. No, I, I didn't, didn't even recognize yeah, it. I, I didn't know that either. So just a lot of little things like that you'll find in the documentary. Mm -hmm. That's you know, if you're a fan of hip hop, if you're a fan of a tribe called Coast, which I know a lot of you guys are, uh, you'll find out a lot about these guys, about the tribe and who it was, and just the production side of things. It was just intriguing all the way around. I found out I didn't realize 
and you know color i don't hope i don't lose credibility with you guys but i found out that the beat nuts really were in the native tongues yeah this who knew something. i didn't realize that i yeah. thought it was all just you know you know, money love and you know uh uh, Black Sheep, and, you know, mm -hmm. the, obviously De La, Jungle Brothers, or whatever. Yeah, because the styles don't seem to mesh. No, not, necess Native not necessarily, but if again, when you, it makes sense when you see the documentary. So we'll do a show on it. We'll go into more detail. I don't want to tell you everything about it right now, but it's, it's intriguing. Okay, that's great. Well, we're going to get into something real quick, but before we do that, I just want to let everybody know, thank you again from the bottom of my heart, and I'm sure from Muff's heart, For too, sure. if he can find his. What would we love when you guys send us, send us your comments? Man. Do not stop them. Don't your stop. emails, even if we all think that we good whack. stuff. Even if you think we get suck. at us and let us know y'all whack. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, you can hit us up on our Twitter account. Yep. Hit us up on our Twitter account because we're pretty new to this whole Twitter thing. But we're twittering. We're letting y'all know what's going on. Twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. So hit us up on Twitter. You can hit us up on Twitter at Kid and Muff forty-four on Twitter. That's K I D D A N D M U F F on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry, forty-four at the end of Muff that. 44, Kid right. and Muff. 44 at Twitter. You can also hit us up on our email account, which is the same as our Twitter account, kidandmuff44 at gmail.com. Don't forget to hit us up on our Facebook, in which we are the Cypher Crew. Now, a lot of you guys get us at, get up at us at our, on our Facebook and on our Twitter, and we love you guys for that. But one thing that we want to make sure that you guys are doing is subscribing this to uh, AC, <coughs> CLB TV. I don't even know what I'm talking about. CLB TV. Shouts right. out to Curtis Black. He's the director of all these things here, and he's a pretty, pretty much the, the, the owner of this channel. He's the one who all these things to give us a chance to do our thing sure. subscribe to this channel we got a lot of great things going on we got the mighty oval we got policy and prejudice going on in this channel mm -hmm. so subscribe to this channel also don't forget to leave your comments below this thing you know somewhere down there you'll see some some comments Likes, dislikes yes yeah, kind of, you, know, you know and hit that like button man hit that like thing hit that like thing we're trying to make some moves here this thing has become a lot bigger than we ever thought it would be so we're we're trying we're trying to extend it some more, but you guys gotta hit us up. We're asking for the uh, the support of the hip hop community and everything right. out there there, which we have been getting. But let your friends know about the cipher. Let your friends know about the cipher crew and where to hit us up and subscribe to CLB TV. Do Please that. do that. Please do, do that. But anyway, now that I've gotten all that out of the way, Magic let's get into what we really came here to talk about, which is my man Sky Zoo. K Y Z O O S K Y Z O O. Anyway, and the album is called The Great Debate. That's an ill name. Ill name for an album, by the way. Okay, why is that? Because, man, I mean, he's I debating. He spent, you know he a lyricist from the jump. Okay. The great debater. That let you know that the focus is what he uh, is going to be on, what he's saying. Okay. Okay? Okay, I didn't um, look at it that way, but I understand where you're coming uh, from. Hey, nothing to it. The album art is crazy because the album art is just a picture of the old Cosby the show. The Cosby show? Yeah, I thought that was cool. And, and, and maybe you could, <laughs> I, I didn't want to seem too ignorant, but why did he, why did he, why do you think he went to that, that album art? The act, the real answer is I don't know. I just think it was cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I mean, better. That, yeah, that, that you know was, I, mean? I, um, go, I don't know, because what do you think of the Cosby's? You think of something intellectual anyway. I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, Bill Cosby's always been about education. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Sky Zoo, though. I've been on Sky Zoo for a minute. Okay. Um, back in 2006, he put out an album called Cloud Nine, uh, The Three Day High with Ninth Wonder. Mm-hmm. What, one of the more underrated albums I've heard, okay? Um, that's when I first got on him in 2006. Uh, the latest thing he put out here is The Great Debater. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a free album, okay? So when you go into free albums, you're like, okay, what, what type of product am I going to get? Mm -hmm. I see a trend going on, man. A lot of these underground artists are giving their product away. Mm -hmm. Well, that's you know what, what you got to do it nowadays. Yeah, that's what you gotta, and so the, the game is literally changing before everyone's eyes, mm -hmm. you know? In fact, uh, a couple of albums ago, he put out the Salvation, which is on. I think it was on Jive. Was it on Jive? Let me check. Yeah, it was on. Uh, boom, 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 boom. No, it was on Duck Down Records. That's still underground. Duck anyway, Down. Yeah, Duck Down. Um, at any rate, very good album. Very slept on. Mm -hmm. Okay, Beats has always been his forte too. I think he has a pretty good ear for beats. Mm -hmm. uh, the Great Debater is no exception. But I will say this. I know when I when I, when we first talked about this album. You were telling me that the beats were kind of hit and miss. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I remember internally, I was saying to myself, well, no, I thought it was dope, right? But what happens is, and this is kind of what my process is, we're reviewing albums. When I'm just listening to it, I have one way of thinking about it. But then when I sit down and really listen to it again um, for the show, I might be a little bit more critical on certain things. Mm -hmm. And I found out that this album, beat-wise, is a little bit more hit and miss. But when you see something, when I hear something that's hit and miss, and I want you to get the wrong impression, like, God, oh, the beats is whack. Mm -hmm. and no, it's literally hit and miss. Mm -hmm. There are some beats that really are exceptional. Mm -hmm. Exceptional. Yes. 
Um, there's other beasts that are a little bit more pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the lyrical side of things, this dude, I mean, he's on a, this dude is on some stuff lyrically. Why don't you speak on that a little bit? Well, where, where are you at? Well, Sky Zoo, he's one of those people. I'm going to put him on my list of those people who are changing hip hop right now that are going to change it for the, for the better when it, when it comes to years ahead. Everybody's saying, well, hip hop is dying. This, that, and the other thing we've said it before in other segments. You know, hip hop's dying. You got people like him, like Black Milk, like a lot of other MCs that we've been talking about. Now, mm -hmm. this guy is very confident. He's very straightforward, very but very humble MC. Now, on this album, he talks about life as an artist and things of that nature. Now, lyrically, he is so kind of almost laid back, and he almost his 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 voice sounds a little bit like Styles P. I thought from from the locks. Styles P. Now, not style wise. Yeah, not style wise. Yeah, but, not but style wise. Yeah, voice, -wise. He voice -wise, a little bit, maybe a little bit more nasal. Yeah, just a, just a little little bit nasal, not like saying it's annoying or anything else like that because I, I did love his voice, but he's one of those MCs that knows how to use a beat. And the one thing about him, he has so many different gears. Remember we are just talking about uh, MCs like, like Cannabis. Right. Lyrically crazy, is a great lyricist, but only has one gear. Yeah, and I, 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 just to speak on that, I don't want to go into, we don't want to go into this because this could be another show. Mm -hmm. But I was telling you how I was listening to the Keith Murray Cannabis album. Mm -hmm. And like, if you were to look at lyrically who is nicer, the default position would be like, well, it depends who you talk to. Mm -hmm. But I would have thought, well, obviously we know that Cannabis is a beast. Mm -hmm. But with Cannabis and Keith Murray rhyming together, I'm looking at it and it shed a little light on the type of artist that Cannabis is. Mm -hmm. He's a one gear guy. Mm -hmm. So every time the beat came on, he's rhyming like this, he's hitting it like that. And he hits every, it. He hits it. But sometimes the songs are hit and miss as a result of that because it becomes predictable and mm -hmm. almost mundane. Mm -hmm. Keith Murray, by his nature, is a very charismatic mm -hmm. MC. And he's lyrical. Mm -hmm. And there's some times where he, you know, I don't want to give the album away, but lyrically he says some things, he'd be like, wow, he's sunning mm -hmm. uh, cannabis a little bit because they rhyming, you know, I mean, he's, he, man, listen, Keith mm -hmm. Murray be saying that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say, but yeah. I love versatility in MCs. That's and you can even argue that Sky Zoo maybe has one gear. No, not really. No, Sky it Zoo. It, 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 it. No, I was on, gonna go, say Sky go. Zoo. That's why I brought this this point up. Sky okay. Zoo is like water when it when it comes to uh, his 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 beats. He makes his beats come out a little bit more because of the way that he flows. I mean, if you okay. sit there listen to this album, yeah. he flows not not different on every track, but there's certain tracks he will totally switch up his flow. Yeah. Now, now Sky Zoo, like I said, he's a little more laid back, so you can. He's such a good lyricist yeah. that you don't even realize how complex his rhyme scale is. Okay, that's a great point because. It's like that. What I tell, what I tell people about. This is what I talk to people about singers all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the difference between, say, Patti LaBelle and say the late great Luther Vandross. Mm -hmm. Patti, Patti LaBelle, she gets on stage, she hollers, she'll sing it, she goes to church, ah, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? She goes there. Uh, you, don't, you ain't gonna say nothing bad about Patti, now. That's, that's no. That, but that, here's that's, the thing. That, that's my girl now. Look, but for me, Luther Vandross mm -hmm. is a better singer because he has subtlety and he knows how to manipulate beats in a way with which style of singing. Okay. Think about it. It's kind of the same thing in hip hop. Okay. Another example is, and, I, and I'm gonna go back to the tribe. Uh, documentary uh, that I was watching yesterday, mm -hmm. Benita Applebaum. Okay. He Q-Tip is very subtle on that album, mm -hmm. on that song, but it was exceptional. Mm -hmm. Hey, Benita, glad to meet you. Mm -hmm. Let the beat do what it do. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's not over rhyming. Mm -hmm. He's being very subtle. Let okay. the beat do what it does, putting you in a certain mood. Yeah. Then that that's that's the test of a good MC, not just rhyming. Applying to what it is you're rhyming over, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Just doing you because you got the gift, right? You know, Sky Zoo is good in that way, and I do agree with you on that. Now, uh, as far as the beats are concerned, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I kind of wrote down some some notes here. Um, he has a he has a few different producers. You know, Ill Mind, you know, uh, and I I like Ill Mind actually was the producer of his of his last album. Let's see here. It was, uh, what was the name of his last time with Ill Mind? You know me getting that stuff from, does it? Live from the tape deck. Duck Down Records also. Okay. okay. And actually some bangers on there too, by the way. All right. Remember, yeah, I remember listening to that album. But um, Ill Mind, very good producer on the underground. Uh, Ninth Wonder, uh, Best Kept Secret, Oh No. Mad Lips Little Brother, mm -hmm. uh, Swift D. Uh, but some of the beats that stuck out to me, stuck out to me, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I talked about the horns on, on Pardon Me. It's produced by Faith. Mm -hmm. Horns is Bagan. Um, also by Best Kept Secret. Um, we Here. Mm -hmm. Exceptional. But the, I'll tell you one beat that stuck out to me. The one beat that stuck out to me is not even really a beat per se. Mm -hmm. It's an actual David Axelrod song. Yes, yes, you were telling me about that. Yeah, no, I, I remember you know, I was talking to, you know, I, I, I was making fun of Russell because Russell actually sent me the leak to the uh, video for the song. Um, and we posted it this song. We posted this song probably like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering why I listened to it. Initially, I thought it was a knife wonder. I think even posted on our Facebook page that this was a Ninth Wonder beat. And, this, mm. and I was so wrong. So let me just, I love it. I admit what I'm wrong. I mean, it's, I have no problem with that. I just mm. want to be correct. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So um, I'm wondering why this song goes in stages. I'm like, man, just, Ninth is some different stuff right about now. This is crazy. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Because it's got guitars. It's all over the place, you know? Um, very jazzy, but yet funky. And he rhymes over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. No breaks, nothing. Just going, man. Exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. Uh, last song on the album. So, I, I, I mean, for me, I'm very big on Sky Zoo. Uh, the beat wise was hit and miss, but some of the other beats were kind of more miss to me. Uh, very pedestrian. And I think he's the kind of guy that does better from consistent production. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one producer that's on his game with Sky Zoo, ill. But you could say the salvation. Uh, a couple years ago when that came out, he had a few different producers on that too. I thought that was a, one of the more slept on albums of 2009, I think it came out. So, uh, for me, Sky Zoo, absolutely off the hook, I think, lyrically. The beats are hit and miss, but when they hit, boy, yes. do they hit. Mm -hmm. Boy, do they hit. So, for me, if I'm going to rate this thing, mm -hmm. if I'm going to rate this, go for it. I'm going to give it, go strength of the lyricism and the, some of the beats being hot, I give it about three out of five. Okay. A solid three out of five. I almost would go three and a half, mm -hmm. but I want to. I, I want to see him have, have a little bit more consistent production. But that said, it's a very listenable album. Oh yes, very. Even though some of the beats are hit and miss, you can still play it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. From beginning to end, and I, I mean consistency as far as the greatness or the dopeness of the beats. But the album itself plays pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. So I'll give him points for that. So maybe I'll actually go three and a half for that. Okay. I'll go three and a half out of five. Okay. Well, I I, mean, I may totally agree with you when it comes to the beat selection. Beat Selection was a little bit hit, hit and miss, but it was still a, a very, very tight album. Very right. tight. I mean, that's the first thing that came to my mind yeah. after I first listened to it the first time. Right. It was very tight. The lyrics don't stop. The lyrics are incredible. Now, oh, The Great man. Debater, I mean, just to, just for lyrics alone, I mean, I gave him so many points just for just for, just for lyrical content. Right. And um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go ahead and rate this one. I'm going I'm to give this one a 3.5 as well. Very listenable. Very, very, very dope project. I just think it could have been a little bit better dope or doper uh, beat-wise. Yeah. And just on just on the David Axelrod uh beat, I didn't get the name of the song. Uh it's called The Definitive Uh Prayer. The Definitive Prayer. Mm -hmm. Very good. You if you check our Facebook page, I, I listed it some time ago. Go back, listen to it, it's very dope. And he just rhymes over the whole, you know, jazz track is mm -hmm. essentially what it is. Funky jazz, progressive, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But uh definitely, you know, big ups to this. This is a very good album, The Great Debater. And this dude is very lyric lyrically, he's definitely one of the better MCs in the underground mm -hmm. for real. Yep. So up and comer, don't forget to uh, hit us up on our Twitter account, which is Kid and Muff, K-I-D-D-A-N-D-M-U-F-F-44 on Twitter. Same thing for our Gmail account, Kid and Muff44 at gmail.com. Don't forget to hit us up on Facebook. We are the Cypher Crew. Cypher Crew. Sky Zoo. Muff gave it 3.5. I gave it a 3.5. Very listenable album. Great. Look for the album with the Huxtables on it. Yeah, Why? That's it. Because the Cypher said so, son. We out of right, here. Peace. peace.